All right, so this is tonight's project. Um, this is my simplicity citation. Um, and it's got a problem, right? So the problem here, now the downside is, is I block off my light when I try to show you the problem. But hopefully you can see. Doesn't that valve uh, stem down there on the bottom look a lot thicker than the one on the top? Well, here's the thing. That's not the valve stem you're seeing right in there. That is actually the valve guide that has pushed out of the head and it stopped the uh, rocker arm from compressing the valve and bent the push rod really badly. Now, I've had this problem once already and uh, I pushed it back in and of course after half a season it pushed itself back out now i've ordered a new head but the new head won't be here forever because um the supply chain here in america is totally jacked up so the biggest problem is what caused all of this is this will suck in grass right and it plugs up this area and the fins and if you don't keep an eye on it and keep it clean you don't get proper airflow across the head. Well, then the head overheats and aluminum and whatever that valve guide is made out of do not expand at the same rate. So the aluminum probably grows more and than the valve guide does because it's going over temperature, which means the valve guide becomes loose and it wiggles out and then it bends the push rods. So my goal tonight is to see if I can't get that valve guide out. tried to compress this uh, spring, I couldn't because the valve uh, guide was all the way out touching um, the top of the spring retainer here. So I did have to press the valve retainer in a little bit so that way I could at least compress the spring. So now, I don't want to lose these either. So if they fall out as intended, they should fall right into there found it on the floor so my uh, little rag here didn't do anything ah. whatever at least it'll roll to me this way so I've got one let's try to get that other one second one should be easier there we go second one just now here is the key I have to make sure I don't push this valve all the way into the cylinder because then we'll have no choice all right so my plan is i'm going to press this in and then i'm going to peen the aluminum around it to try to tighten it up i don't know how well that's going to work this just has to get me through this season i did this last year and it got me like another i don't know 30 hours of mowing i have a new head ordered so this is a short-term problem all right so I'm going to make sure I don't use a sharp punch because if this is hardened steel, I don't want to crack it or break it because then once again, I am in trouble. So. I don't know how far in I should push this go too far I don't know if it'll come out the other side and keep the valve from closing hopefully it bottoms out on a blind all right I don't feel like it's moving anymore so I feel like it's a blind hole. Just to be sure. All right, now I am going to try to tighten this up. 
I also don't want to crack the head, but see, I made a little dent. All right, so I'm gonna put, I put a little bit of a dent right there. And then I put one right here. On the inside. And now I'm going to try to see if I can't put a little bit of a divot right down here. All right. So I got a little smash there, a little smash here, and a little smash here. I'm trying to make that extra tight. Um, here's the thing. The reason this thing worked itself loose is because I think I overheated the mower. So, you know, this may not be doing any good at all, but whatever. I'm trying to get a little bit more runtime out of this thing so that I can um, get back to mowing until the head comes in so we're going to put a new push rod in i could just straighten out the old one um that way i can save the new one for when the new head comes in um which that i may do i'm going to straighten the old push rod and i'll show you guys how to do that all right so this is our push rod it's clearly very very bent now i have a brand new one but I want to save the brand new one for when the brand new head comes in. So I'm going to show you how I do this. It's pretty simple. Now, you don't want to mar these tips up very much because, you know, yeah, anyways. So to avoid marring the tips, I'm going to put them onto aluminum just like that. Let me turn it sideways so you guys can see. It's going to make it harder for me, but... All for YouTube. And this is the one I straightened in the past. You can see there's already some hammer marks on there. <sighs> Try to hang on to it so that way you're not denting the nice round ends up when it hits the concrete. All right, at this point, um, the angle is minimized enough that the little round balls aren't really, you know, rubbing. So I'm gonna raise it up. So when you hear that sound change, it means it's metal on metal, which means there's no gap underneath, so rotate it. A granite surface I'm going to go check it on now that I'm close they make straightening jigs where you have an indicator and then a little arbor press um, for this kind of stuff, but um, you don't have to be dead nuts on. You just need to be straight enough that when it pushes, it doesn't. Uh, and this is not a high RPM motor with lots of tension. The only thing that's going to bend this is if the valve guide pushes out and the system binds up. Otherwise, there's very little pressure on this. And eyeballing it is going to be good enough. All 
All right. Pretty good. Considering it looked like a banana before. So, that'll work. That will get us uh, mowing for the rest of the season until our new head and new push rods come in. All right, so if you thought getting this uh, assembly apart was the hard part, no. Putting it back together is going to be harder um, for a couple of reasons. Now, I'm going to turn the motor over just to make sure I got it in the right slot. Yep. All right. So there, it's pushed all the way out. And I want it to be all the way in. So I'm manually turning the motor over by hand. All right, so there we go. Now, I'm not gonna mess with this because this uh, backlash was already set. If it's a problem, I'll adjust it, but I'm not looking to do extra work. I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this right here. Actually, looks like it still has some. Um, cake in the threads. Oh, yeah, so. First order of business is get the spring back on. So here's a problem. We've got to compress this spring without the tool that we need, without pushing the valve into the motor. Then we have to get the retainers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push it in with this pliers and I'm going to try to set this guy right on top of the valve. Ah, so of course the stem's trying to move, but I got one. Okay, usually it's way harder than that. So I got one, I'm gonna rotate it so it's down the bottom. I'm gonna push in again and try to get this top one. So I'm gonna take it. Now these go in, they're tapered, right? So the large side is on the outside. So I'm gonna get that like this. I'm gonna push in. Okay, that's not gonna work. So, I might just need to really hurt my fingers here. So I'm gonna get it started by hand, because it's tapered. And then you gotta rotate it. <clears throat> and this might be something where you've gotten in over your head and you have to go ahead and take it to a shop. Um, <laughs> don't feel bad. This is probably the most complex part of this process, is getting this back together. So now I'm going to push it in with my fingers. And i got to wiggle this. There we go. So the key is rock this back and forth like this. And that will allow you to compress the spring without touching and pushing the valve in, right? If you rock it up a little bit, um, you can get that top retainer in. So now the retainers are fully seated. And we have one more step to go. We got to go ahead, put our rocker arm back on. And we may have to adjust the valve lash, um, but I'm going to just start off with it as it was. Since the mower, I'd already set this the last time and the mower, order, mower was running great until the valve, until the push rod got bent. So at first, I'm just tightening this this is the longest screw in the world, and I think they do this so it doesn't vibrate loose. 
All right, so I got that tightened up. I don't want to strip it. I can feel when if I rock it manually, there's a there's some play there, so that's good. I think you usually set it like seven to ten. I don't know. You can check your manual to see if that's correct. Let's give it a manual turn. Look at that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the valve covers back on. And before I put all the covers and everything on, we will hook everything else back up and see if it runs. 